Okay, I'm going to talk about the blood quantum. Okay, 50% or more Hawaiian blood to be qualified as a native Hawaiian. Okay? But when you look at the amendments that they tried to sneak through last month in the Akaka Bill, okay, it talks about, or rather, it defines this new term called qualified native Hawaiian constituents. Okay, and it gave you this whole elaborate description and definition. Okay, like Kim Moku was saying, you know, you gotta be in the military, um, um, have uh, Kuliana land, etc., etc. But what it doesn't say is. It doesn't say how that relates to Native Hawaiian because they still use Native Hawaiian in the bill, in the amendment. And the only definition for Native Hawaiians is like what Kim Moku said, is that you gotta be an American citizen and you gotta have 50% or more Hawaiian blood. So what it tells me is that now you have two types of Hawaiian. One is gonna be the qualified Native Hawaiian constituents who all are going to decide and the bona fide and the, and the bona fide and then you're going to have the 50 percent or more Native Hawaiian. So either way, you're going to get slapped two times bro, by them. Okay. And the the important part about this is that both of them are race based. So no matter which way they look at it, this is a whole race based bill and it's bad and it's ever like you were saying what earlier which is you know you're yeah. talking about well i was talking about the kind of the kuliana lands they also recognize in the spite of native hawaiian department of hawaiian homelands yeah it's being a component to an applicant yeah to even being considered to be a part of the so-called rec requirements of conditions under the Kaka Bill. It talks about Kuliana landowners that was awarded properties from the time of the Mahele. Now how those lands are being determined, not only through genealogical status, but also through from, from the time from the Mahele all the way down to today. They talk about, they talk about that review shall go to the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, yeah, or to court. To solidify your jurisdiction as a fully on a landowner, they always speak to go to these two entities. So kind of interesting, yeah, that all of a sudden, Office of Hawaiian Affairs is still playing inside of it. Which, if anything, the Office of Hawaiian Affairs that knows that they're they going to they gonna go belly up in two years, yeah? Because they're part of a, they're actually a state agency. They shouldn't even be allowed to intervene in this process at this point because they're supposed to represent the constituents of Hawaii, and they're not. They're representing the minorities, and the minorities is all the non-Hawaiians. We are the Kanaka. We are the ones that have the interest and the outright say so to whatever the, the legal ramifications of process. We also can talk about the plebiscite, we can talk about the, the reconciliation, we can talk about the referendum. All those kinds of things, like the referendum, what is that, Kawino? Let's bull that because the majority of the constituents that have signed for Kawino, they live in the mainland. They don't live over here, they're not going through the same problems we're going through. And if they did come over here, then you know what, still yet, they need to get educated on the on the point of where we're going to from now so we all can you know hold hands and really see what what is really going to benefit us so the process for native hawaiians or beneficiaries i should say kanaka maoli the process for us is illegal it's totally illegal it's a, it's, it's appalling it's it's coercive coercive to a point where everything in the bill talks about genocide it's a genocidal process. There is no remedy for future endeavors if we accept this as a status quo for us. Never.